Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So GDC has just wrapped up and Unity had quite a bunch of interesting things to show. They made some news and had a bunch of sessions on their Twitch channel which you can go watch. Here's some highlights. First one was their brand new real-time CG demo called Enemies. Really insanely impressive video. By now I'm already pretty used to seeing some gorgeous hyperreal environments, but seeing a fully CG character of this quality is truly insane. Honestly I thought it was green screen until it zoomed in quite a bit further. And again, the more insane thing is the fact that this is running in real time. So we've reached a point where we can render 30 frames per second, whereas 20 years ago it took days to render a single frame. There's a bunch of technical details from the rendering lead of this project on Twitter and also from the live stream. The most important one that tons of people were wondering is what hardware is this running on? The answer is this is all running in real time at 4K 30fps with an i7 and an RTX 3090. So definitely a high-end machine but nothing too insane, it's not running on a huge render farm. And another thing that people asked is what version of Unity is this running? Usually these impressive demos require tons of custom things added on top of the regular engine with lots of tweaks sometimes in the source code itself. But that is not the case in this scenario. This one is using standard HDRP on a vanilla Unity editor. It's using ray traced and screen space for ambient occlusion, ray traced shadows and reflections as well. Then for the hair, usually that's one of the toughest parts and this demo definitely has some of the best hair that I've ever seen. Apparently there's a hair package coming out in Q2. There were even more details in the live stream afterwards which you can go watch in the full VOD. They showcase it running in real time in the editor, really zoomed in to see all of the impressive detail and played around with the hair system. In the end of the live stream, they even played around with changing the hair color and the eyes and the whole thing runs great. So extremely impressive and again the fact that this is running in real time is truly mind boggling. This demo will be released sometime soon so you can try it out for yourself. Now usually I stick with URP since I tend to prefer more stylized games over something hyper real but I'm definitely interested in exploring out this project when it's out. I definitely want to at least take a look to that really awesome fire shaded effect they made. And speaking of URP, the next big news is a new sample game. This one is a complete game, so it's not just a demo, not just a visual scene. It's also extremely impressive. Really, if you told me this was the next big budget console exclusive, I'd have believed you. It's got excellent art, excellent sound, world, characters, environment, really everything. This does not look like a simple sample game, it looks like a proper, well-made, awesome game. This project will also be downloadable, and the final version will be a free game on Steam. There was a talk during the live stream that showed some gameplay and tons of details for how it works. Basically the team at Unity used a ton of Unity tools to build this demo, really validating all of their tools in a real production scenario. It uses the new input system, sin machine, timeline, uses the localization package, visual scripting, state machines, nav mesh for pathfinding, a bunch of physics, lots of scriptable objects for all use cases. It uses animation breaking, VFX graph, shader graph and tons more. By the way, just a quick plug for my courses, my goal with my Ultimate Unity Overview course is exactly to teach all of these Unity tools and features. Unity has so many tools that chances are you don't know about some of them and they might be super useful for whatever you're currently working on. There's already over 50 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine, including many of these, and I'm constantly updating the course since there's still even more tools left to cover. So check it out if you want to learn how many of these things work. They also use some of their own assets, which I think is a great example for how you actually make games. During the prototype stage, they use their awesome third person start asset. This one is free and it's really awesome, I made a video on how quickly you can get started using it and have a character up and running. They also use another excellent package, the photon mode. I haven't covered that one, but I've looked into it and it's pretty great. And for the water on this game, they also grabbed the shader from their previous sample project, the boat attack demo. So this one is a great example on how they reuse tons of things to really help them develop this game. Possibly the most useful thing to come out of this sample game is the character controller. It's a kinematic character controller with tons of features, easily handles touching physics objects, interacting with hinges, moving platforms, rotating objects and so on. They showed a really awesome character gym with all kinds of obstacles and the character controller perfectly handles all of them. It's got various inclines, slopes and steps, lots of moving objects, a bunch of gears and some rolling balls, there's a bunch of jump pads, it even has some dynamic contextual animations where the character leans and pushes the arm out when on a steep slope. It really is a very impressive, very versatile character controller. I think if they were to turn this into an asset it would be hugely helpful to a ton of people, and even if they don't specifically do that, you'll still be able to get the full project and get it yourself. I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. So this ML project is looking really awesome, 
you can sign up to be notified when the download is available. I've done that already and I can't wait to try it. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Some more news that actually happened before GDC. The updated state of Unity Dots. I covered it in a quick news video. Basically, they just made a massive update and they're on track for launching 1.0 next year. During GDC, they had a great Q&A section where they answered a bunch of questions. It was co-hosted by Johnny from Turbo Mix Games. Check out his channel if you're interested in some more Dots content. In there, they talked about the various goals for Dots 1.0, again, emphasizing how Dots does not replace game objects, they can work very well together. They also clarified that the Dots netcode is meant for Dots, whereas for game objects, you have the ML API, which is now also known as netcode for game objects. A really awesome part of that session was when they brought out a developer behind the massive VR MMO Zenith to talk about their tech. The game has been massively well received and uses Dots in a bunch of various ways. It's a VR MMO, so that's very demanding and must run extremely smooth or else the players feel very nauseous. For example, having game objects with scripts constantly running some game DXP logic, it's very tough to handle that with that many XP events and that many players in a performant way. But when swapping just that part for ECS, then the logic is very simple. Most of the game is game object based, but each game object also has an entity attached to it. So in this case, instead of running game object logic for every single EXP gained event, it just adds an EXP component, an ECS component to the entity connected to that game object, and then the system goes through all of the entities that gain the XP and handles them all at once. Also, lots of great comments on how they use a hybrid workflow, basically using game objects where game objects make sense, and using entities where entities make sense, and really just combining both to make the best game possible. So again, whenever you hear anything about dots, remember it's something you use alongside game objects. You don't have to go with just one or just the other. Combining both will likely give you the best results. Then they brought out another developer behind the game Detonation Racing, which also uses dots. In this case, they use dots for recording and playback of full races. Since ECS is data oriented, it makes it super easy to save the entire game state. That's great for recording gameplay and making demos and they use it for some better playtesting and reproducing bugs. So as the tester is playing the game, the game is constantly recording. Then if the tester finds a bug, they can upload the exact same demo file, and then the dev can just play back that demo and rerun the exact same series of inputs to replicate the issue and then fix the bug. It's a really excellent use case, which is made really easy if you're using ECS. Then there was the roadmap talk. They talked about how Unity versions work, the LTS and the tech system, I made a video on that topic if you don't know the logic behind those versions. They talked about their core pillars for the upcoming 2022 tech stream. So those being rendering performance and improved features with URP. Then their goal is also editor customization with UI toolkit. After that, another important pillar is netcode for game objects. That one is currently in preview, so it should be fully out sometime within this year. And finally, continuing to make lots of platform optimizations. So nothing too flashy, but it's really nice to see some more stability and performance, along with multiplayer and finally seeing the UI toolkit. There was another roadmap talk with a bunch more detail, but that one was on GDC itself, so there's no public recording. I've asked the Unity team if I can see those slides, and if I do, then I'll see if I can make a video on that. Also, you might have seen me in the visual scripting session. I was there alongside Ashley and Hassan going over the basics of visual scripting. And in the end, I also showcased a pretty complex script from my FPS game from my visual scripting course. It's an entire game made entirely with visual scripting. There's not a single line of code anywhere in any of the course games. It was pretty fun to join their live stream and talk a bit about visual scripting. I saw lots of great comments in chat, so thank you all for joining me. One thing that Ashley wanted to mention, but we ran out of time, was the visual scripting roadmap. We didn't get to it in the live stream, but the page is live, so you can go see what's coming up. In that page, you can also find the roadmaps for tons of things related to Unity. And the live stream also had a bunch of creative spotlights. This is their series where they invite a developer from a game made with Unity and they go inside the editor and talk about the various tips and tricks they use in making the game. These are always super interesting. For me, the best one was on Tunic. It's a gorgeous game that was in development for seven years. It's finally released and it's getting some awesome reviews. They show the game running in the editor. One of the things that I loved seeing was the massive difference with and without post-processing and what individual effects they use. It really makes a huge difference. I also loved seeing their VFX tricks, for example, using meshes for particle paths and tons of use cases for some simple scrolling textures. 
really clever tricks and the final effects look gorgeous. Also showcase some interesting grass character avoidance, pretty simple, just some math and a collider but it works great. So yeah, that was my favorite one, but there were a bunch more on various games. It's really interesting to see how all of these games work under the hood. And last of all, at the very end of the livestream on the last day were the Unity Awards. Lots of awesome games, tools and creators were nominated in tons of unique awards. And as you might have heard from my previous video or my updated banners, yep, I won the Best Tutorial Creator Award. This was voted by the community, so thank you all so much. I'm really happy that people enjoy these videos and I plan to keep making them for a very long time. I've got lots of awesome stuff planned for this year, so next year hopefully I'll also be worthy of your vote, so thanks again. Alright, so that was Unity at GDC 22. Really great stuff, I really enjoyed watching these past 3 days, congrats to the entire Unity team, I think they all did a wonderful job setting all this up and making all of these awesome projects. Who knows, maybe next year when international travel becomes a bit easier, I might be there in person to watch all of this awesome stuff live. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.